For the first time on the shooting show, we're not gonna be having a look at a full bore rifle. Instead, we're having a look at this, Anschutz 1517 in 17HMR. Now, Anschutz as a company don't really need any introduction. They have walls full of Olympic medals and screeds of world records to their name. There is absolutely no doubt that they can build exceptionally accurate rifles. What we're gonna be doing is having a look at this rifle, which is built on their famous Match 64 action, and see how it fulfills the application of hunting. If we start off with how the rifle feels, the first thing you will note is that this particular model is the thumbhole stock version. Now what's interesting about the thumbhole stocks is these thumbhole stocks are actually made here in the UK. And I have to say, of all the thumbhole uh, stocks that I've used, which have been made out of wood, this is by far the most comfortable. It just sucks into your shoulder so comfortably and the way that your hand just fits in on this palm swell around the pistol grip here it just gives you this rock steady platform it's in quite a nice grade of wood and checkering is where you would expect it to be it's nice and crisp in the hand and in terms of the ergonomics of the stock they've absolutely got this right um, and for a from a hunting application point of view it doesn't really get much better than this for being able to hunt out of a vehicle. Um, it's certainly very comfortable and helps you move around when you've got a good grip of the rifle. And what furthers that is the fact that this rifle has a particularly short barrel. And you will notice here, if you look, this is a, a lot shorter than you will probably be used to. This is an 18 inch barrel. Anschutz also make this in 14 inches. I think that's brilliant for a 2.2 rifle, but personally, I think 14 inches is probably a little bit too short to make the most of a 1.7 HMR but in its 18 inch form, you put a moderator on the end of this, you can move in and out of a vehicle very easily indeed. I've already said that this rifle is built on the Match 64 action. Now Anschutz actually also make a Match 54 action, and that is generally accepted to be the superior platform. However, you will pay more than twice as much to have a rifle built on a Match 54 action. Anschutz realized that the high expense of their Match 54s was excluding a lot of people from owning an Anschutz rifle. So they went back to the drawing board and designed the Match 64, stripping out the really expensive parts of the manufacturing process. And what they were left with was a rifle that was far more affordable and yet maintained the incredible levels of accuracy that you would expect from an Anschutz. If we start with the bolt and action, the first thing I'll tell you is that this is probably the smoothest feeding 17 HMR I've ever used. Because I loaded up the first round for the first time and cycled through the five shot magazine, I was definitely taken with how smooth it was and it definitely brought a bit of a smile to my face. Uh, the bolt itself has a swept back handle with a big substantial synthetic bolt knob. It's really easy to grip however you want to load it, if you palm it or grip it. Certainly we'll have no troubles with that. Oh, the bolt is a little bit unusual. If I just remove it by pressing forward the release and the trigger at the same time, you'll see that it's actually quite a long bolt for a rimfire. And the reason for that is that you'll see that the, the bolt handle actually sits about a third of the way along, as opposed to a CZ, which is right at the back. The other thing which is a little bit unusual is that you'll notice at the back here, the, the cocking piece is actually visible and so is the separation in the bolt. Now when you pull the trigger you will see that the the cocking piece flying forward which in turn pushes the firing pin onto the rim of the cartridge and like you would expect from an Anschutz has a very fast lock time not as fast as the Match 54 but it's still very fast. The only criticism I would have of this is if you have a look closely you will see that even when the bolt is in the gun there is still a bit exposed between the cocking piece and the rest of the bolt. Now, that in itself isn't a problem, but from a hunting perspective, although I have never heard of any problems, it just makes me wonder what would happen if you did get some grit or dirt down in between the cocking piece. And if you got a little pebble or something, if you were crawling, it might stop the rifle from going off. Ejection is achieved via two claws gripping around the rim of the case before it hits a a solid stop at the end and ejects it out of the ejection port. Now everybody knows that one of the essential components to building an accurate rifle is to have a superb trigger. 
you need a really light, crisp break to shoot accurately. And knowing that Anschutz build some simply excellent target rifles with some brilliant triggers, you would expect the same to be in their target rifles. And indeed, you won't be disappointed. It is the same mechanism and components that are used in their hunting rifles that they use in the rest of their target models. So I was a little bit um, surprised when I got this rifle to find that there was creep in the trigger. Now, I wasn't sure who had had it before me. It's possible that somebody had been tinkering a little bit, but I knew that they were adjustable. I put it on the workbench, and I adjusted the sear engagement and the trigger pull, and eventually got the trigger to where it should be. And as you would expect, the trigger brake on the Anschutz is fantastic. If not, possibly the best trigger unit of any rifle that I've ever fired. Um, now this particular rifle has a single stage trigger. My friend has an almost identical rifle but in its 2-2 form and that has a, a two stage trigger. And I have to say the two stage is particularly nice. Now in terms of the trigger blade itself, it is just the right width for my finger. I like a nice fat blade. Um, could possibly do with being a little bit wider but it has a really nice curve on it. And one thing that I particularly detest on triggers is triggers that are completely smooth. You want something that you can grip and feel in your finger, especially if you're going to be shooting outside in all conditions. And you get that in the Anschutz trigger with these nice ridges. You can really feel it on the tip of your finger. Moving on from the trigger to the magazine, you can see that the magazine is a pretty straightforward affair. There's nothing particularly fancy about it. It's very similar to a lot of uh, rimfire magazines on the market. It is an all metal construction with the exception of the bottom, which is embossed with the Anschutz logo. It is a little bit trickier to feed than my CZ magazine due to the shape um, at the top, but once you get the knack of it, it's not too bad, but it certainly feeds very well out the magazine, and that is essentially the most important thing. In terms of how it fits into the rifle, there is something most definitely worth noting here. Now, a lot of rifles, to drop the magazine out, you'd simply depress the release and the magazine would drop into your hand. This release, you have to hold continually the whole time that you're taking the magazine out because it is gripping the magazine, not just where it attaches when it's fully inserted, but all the way until it's out in your hand. So you have to do this and slide it out. If you let go of the catch at any point, during removing the magazine, say halfway, it'll grip it and the magazine will not fall out. Um, that took a little bit of getting used to, but it's a really good safety feature because it means that if you do inadvertently knock the, the latch, and that would be difficult because it's quite stiff anyway, you're not gonna lose your magazine. It's probably become apparent that I, I really do like this rifle, but the one thing of the rifle that I really don't like is the safety. The safety catch on the Match 64 action really is the weak point as far as I'm concerned. Now, the Match 54 had a side lever which was on the back of the receiver, but the Match 64 is fitted just behind the bolt on the right hand side of the rifle. Now in terms of positioning, this is exactly where I like a safety catch to be. However, the actual operation of this safety is a little bit unpleasant and that's for two reasons. The first is the actual shape of the safety catch itself, which ergonomically is quite poor, and you certainly wouldn't describe it as a comfortable safety catch to use, especially in cold weather conditions. The second is that the safety catch is also quite stiff, and I thought that this might just be this particular rifle and the fact that it's quite new, but having used a couple of other Anschutzes with Match 64 actions, it seems to just be a trait of these rifles. Removing the woodwork lets you appreciate the simplicity of the design of the Match 64 action. The receiver is basically a well-machined tube attached to the barrel via this pin just here. And these Anschutz barrels are very easy to replace. And in fact, manufacturers such as Border Barrels provide off-the-shelf barrels for replacement if required. You can see the magazine well and magazine latch are an external fitting fitted to the receiver, and likewise, so is the excellent trigger unit. Now, there isn't a recoil lug on this, like we have seen on the full bore rifles that we've reviewed on the shooting show. Instead, we just have a wide surface area at the back of the receiver, which fits snugly into the stock. Now, what might be a little bit of a surprise is that the stock isn't actually bedded. Now, would it improve 
the accuracy of this rifle if it was bedded? Probably, but this shoots so well that I would bet that you probably couldn't tell the difference anyway. I've used this rifle quite extensively over a number of months and it never fails to impress. The only reservation I've had about it is the safety catch, but despite this, it is still possibly the best rimfire on the market. And you would expect that from a manufacturer such as Anschutz. But then you are paying a price tag um, to match that level of engineering. If you're looking for a new rimfire, I strongly recommend you get yourself into a gun shop and get your hands on an Anschutz. If nothing else, just to use as a benchmark to judge all the other rifles against. There are some excellent rimfires on the market and choice can sometimes be quite difficult. My own cabinet is filled with CZs, but a lot of my friends who have been buying rifles recently have come over to the Anschutz. It's unlikely that you will find anything else on the market that will shoot better, and they are a superb rifle, even if you are you know, paying those extra few hundred pounds. But with that said, go and have a look at them and make some judgments for yourself.